and more of the power of genomics is becoming visible to the average person. Genomics is a tool. We're reading the code of life of any organism on the planet. We're able to do all sorts of, of things which were unimaginable five years ago. I think it's fair to say that the healthcare sector has probably been ahead of us compared to some of the other sectors. And I think now the food and agri-food sector is starting to look uh, more closely at this. Well, genomics is, it's, it's been part of agriculture for millennia, right? It's just that we're now using more targeted genomics to do what we need to do. Right, whether it's through genetic modification or using other types of genomic tools, uh, we can actually do uh, many things which benefit society. Agri-food area is one area where genomics has a great impact as well uh, to ensure we have safe food. Increasing food supplies in the face of climate change. I think genomics is having, starting to have quite a profound effect on, on the fisheries and aquaculture sector. I think we're just starting to see the emergence of genomics as a, a really powerful tool, a, a different lens to look at the, the science and, and, and our better understanding of the, the species that we, we work with. And so the opportunity to expand that in fish farming is, is, is quite immense for the Canadian economy. On the forest level, I think uh, we'll see genomic science have a, have a strong influence on our tree breeding practices, resistance to pests, to bugs and so on, which we expect will accelerate and increase as climate changes. If one wants to transform the forestry sector from a traditional pulp, paper, lumber into high value bioproducts, then we need to integrate this genomics technology into that sector. I can tell you, in 2000, I never imagined we'd be talking to the mining industry about the value of genomics. Well, uh, first, we've got to recognize Canada has the largest hydrocarbon deposits in the world. Clearly, technology, innovation and technology both, I would say they are the only tool that we have that can make our development activities more sustainable. So right now, we're very comfortable, especially in countries like Canada, and we're not that worried about having sufficient food and safe food to eat. Uh, but there are other countries obviously that do and by 2050 there will be 9 billion people on this planet and we will need to almost double the food production that we currently do in order to meet the needs of that population. When you look at the size of our resources and the challenges that we have and then the opportunity that we have in terms of using technology then it get me excited about working together to solve the problems that we have. We're not at the end of something, we're actually at the beginning of something. It's so cross-cutting and, and has such potential for impact that um, it's really the sky is the limit.